Quick video here to talk about permutations. So we've got uh, 28 students in our maths class and I'm gonna give out some prizes. Uh, I'm gonna pick a name out of a hat and that person is gonna get $5. I'm gonna pick another name out of a hat and that person is gonna get $100 and I'm gonna pull the last name out of the hat and that person is gonna get a car. Okay, so. How many different results can we get? Well, in this case, order is important because, yeah, it would be nice to be the first name pulled out of the hat. It would be better to be the second name out of the hat. And it would be the best to be the third name out of the hat. How many different things could happen in this scenario? Well, the first thing is that one of the 28 students will get $5. One of the remaining 27 students will get $100, and one of 26 students will get the car. 28 times 27 times 26, I think it's a big number. 19,656 different things can happen, different people getting different prizes. Um, okay. This is called a permutation, and I'm going to put up a really, really formal definition of what a permutation is. So, it's the number of ways of choosing R things from N distinct things where order matters. Alright, so there are some important parts of that definition that we're going to get to play with later on. R things. In this case, the R things were, were the people. So, three people. The way of choosing three people from n distinct things. There are 28 distinct people. And importantly, order matters. If I just said, okay, I'm going to pull three names out of a hat and you all win a car. doesn't matter whether you're the first, second or the third. But in this case, order matters. So there's our definition of what a permutation is. Uh, now we can get, add a little formula to go with it. That's not the formula, but it's close. So what it says is NPR, which is fr uh, from N distinct things, find out how many different ways you can choose R things. That's going to be equal to N, uh, the number of distinct things, in that case it was 28, times N minus 1, which is 28 minus 1, which is 27, times, and then I get to here, and which takes a little bit of reading, uh, 28 minus... Um, 3 plus 1, which is what we had to do, because remember we had to do 28 times 27 times 26, so 28 minus 3 would be 25 plus 1. Uh, and so that's our basic formula finding how many uh, ways of choosing R things from N distinct objects were automatic. But that formula is ugly, you can probably guess that we can make it neater with um, factorial. So what we can do is do it as n factorial, which in that specific instance was uh, is 28 times all the way up to 1 over, and then think about what we want to do. We want to do 28 times da -da 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 1, and then we want to do 28 times 27 times 26. So we need to divide that uh, by 25 factorial. If we divide it by 25 factorial, all we'll have left is 28, 27, 26. So, in order to come up with the number 25, on the bottom here, 25 is the same as n minus r plus 1. That's, in this specific instance, that's 28 minus 3, which is 25 plus 1. Actually, we don't need the plus 1. If we just do n minus r, we have a good formula. 28 factorial over 25 factorial. So that is your golden formula. If you want to know the number of ways of choosing r things from n distinct things where order matters, npr equals n factorial over n minus r factorial. So just a couple of examples here. If you were asked to write 6p2 in expanded form, what that is, is n, um, let's write it, 6p2 is equal to 6 times 5. All right, so that's saying how can I, how many different ways are there of choosing two objects from six distinct things? 
And just another example, slightly different, write 8p3 as a quotient of factorials. That's really just saying a quotient, which is divided by a quotient of factorials. That's a factorial and that's a factorial. So 8p3 as a quotient of factorials will be equal to 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial, which is 8 factorial over 5 factorial. And you can type that into your calculator or you can um, simplify it to be 8 times 7 times 6 and you can solve it that way instead. All right, um, you do the last line. That's permutations.